Hi, Heather. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, you're the the reason I wanted uh, to talk to you is because uh, a lot of people, uh, my my uh, podcast is, is both about writing and editing, and I've certainly talked to a lot of individual editors, but what I've never talked about is the editors, the association in Canada that represents editors. It's called Editors Canada, and um, I wonder if to start for listeners, you could just give us a, an idea of the scope of it, how many members it has, and generally what it does to represent editors in Canada. Ah, yes, for sure. Um, so as you mentioned, Editors Canada is the National Association for Editors in Canada. Um, it's a hub for about 1,200 members from across the country, and we do have members in the United States and around the world as well. And we support editors at every stage of their careers. So this could be a student learning the craft, a professional editor at the beginning of their career, an established editor or a mentor, or even an experienced instructor. Um, there's something for all of those people at Editors Canada. Some of the uh, services we offer are training for all skill levels through our webinars and seminars, which can be in person at various branches or twigs or online. Um, we have networking through local and online events and conferences, as well as through volunteer opportunities. Uh, we also have resources for finding work, such as the National Job Board, the Online Directory of Editors, and the uh, previously mentioned networking opportunities. We have free and discounted resources that working editors need, such as our Oxford Premium Reference Collection, um, access to the Chicago Manual of Style, a discount to uh, purchase Perfect It. Um, we offer uh, access to a free mediator to our members. So if there are disputes between um, a client and an editor, we have a mediator who can help with that. And we also offer professional liability insurance. And we also have ad advocacy for the profession through the standards that uh, we have uh, set and created through our professional editorial standards. And these serve as the cornerstone for our professional certification program, for our editing essentials exam and our editing publications, some of which are used as course texts in post-secondary education. And uh, I, uh, just back to the professional editorial standards, the, uh, these stay up to date with the editing industry and they are reviewed and updated about every five years or so. And the latest review is currently in process. Right. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, actually, I, I'm an editor in Canada and I'm actually a member of Editors Canada. So I know some of those things uh, that you mentioned. And for uh, listeners who don't know, you quickly mentioned something called Perfect It. And that's basically a software that uh, a lot of editors purchase that integrates with Word. And it's kind of like a, I think of it as kind of like a high powered uh, spell checker, basically. It does way more than spell checking, uh, but it's a very, very easily integrated software that's fairly inexpensive. And one of the things that Editors Canada does, Editors Canada does, is provide a discounted rate for that. And the other thing you mentioned in passing was about the resources, and those are just awesome. The, the, the Oxford Reference Collection, just a whole I think it's a couple hundred of reference tools and uh, and the uh, Chicago menu of style, which is kind of the, you know, the grand one kind of thing. We have access to that just as part of our membership. Uh, so that that's great. That's great. I'm glad you mentioned those. Yeah, uh, there are a couple. Sorry to interrupt. There are a couple of uh, new, new resources that are coming in 2023. And I can mention them. They've gone out to members already. We will have access to the Oxford English Dictionary. Um, there is a there is a roundabout way to access it through the Oxford Premium Reference Collection, but it's a bit confusing. So we are getting uh, access directly to the dictionary for members, and also access to um, Canadian Press uh, style book and caps and spelling online. So those are two new references that, or sorry, resources that will be coming in 2023, and more information will go out about those. Yeah, no, I was happy to see the, there's a brief news thing today about that. And I certainly was happy to see about the, again, for listeners out there who don't know the ins and outs of what editors do, there's a lot of very specific tools that we use that are, uh, you know, in, in the course of normal writing, any checking you might do, 
a writer, uh, you might not need these tools, but editors do. And the, the Oxford English Dictionary is not just one of the ones that you keep on your shelf. In fact, I don't even think it's so large now. I'm not even sure you can buy it in print, but it's this huge database that tracks the, the language back a thousand years or so. And just a, an incredible work of scholarship. And then the other thing you mentioned about caps and spelling and stuff, those are the kinds of nitty gritty things that at some stages of editing, are essential to have and for a member to be able to get access to that stuff and not have to buy individual copies is a huge benefit for from that the organization offers in my opinion anyway yes for sure can you tell me uh like editing is one of those behind the scenes activities and a lot of people have different ideas about about it. people who are editors know what goes on of course but people who aren't and even people who are writers and i don't mean this as any criticism it's just that uh, you know they 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 are often um uninformed for whatever reason about exactly what editors do and I wonder if you could say in just in very, very broad strokes, like what exactly an editor can do? A writer has just finished a book. What can an editor do to improve that uh, for the writer in hopes of them getting uh, having a better chance of getting it published? Uh, yes, and you're definitely correct that editing is often sort of an invisible profession that not a lot of people know about, but they would definitely notice if it didn't happen. Right. Um, so there are, um, in broad strokes, like you said, there are four main categories of editing. So we have structural editing, which is assessing and shaping material to improve organization and content. Then there is stylistic editing which is editing to clarify meaning, ensure coherence and flow and refine the language. Then there's copy editing, which is editing to ensure correctness, accuracy, consistency and completeness. And finally, there is proofreading, which is examining material after layout or in its final form to correct errors in textual and visual elements. So some editors do all types of editing while others focus on one or two different types. And many editors also bring additional skills to their editing, like document design, writing, fact checking, permission checking, and more. Editors also assess for conscious language. This involves making sure that the language writers use doesn't unintentionally cause harm or perpetuate bias, stigma, or stereotypes. Right. And uh, basically, you can think of an editor as someone who is a facilitator between a writer and their readers. So if a writer is just starting a project, an editor can help them develop their ideas and guide them in the writing process. And if the writer has finished a project, an editor can make sure that everything is consistent from beginning to end and that their work is free of grammatical spelling and stylistic errors. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very good, I mean, it's hard to summarize the whole profession in three minutes, but that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, and just to take the two extremes you mentioned about uh, developmental editing or structural editing versus proofreading, I mean, those are so different in their activities that, as you say, some people, for example, would feel that they're very comfortable doing proofreading and not so much with uh, structural editing, because you sort of have to stand back when you're doing structural editing and look at maybe huge swaths that need to be cut. Whereas with proofreading, uh, you know, you as you said, you have the thing already laid out. This is what it's going to look like. So a proofreader is often looking for very, very tiny details of, you know, uh, where an apostrophe is placed and there's a comma here and there shouldn't be uh, that sort of thing. Very, very tiny details. But all those things add up to making your product, making your writer's product uh, a much, a much more saleable thing or a much more readable thing as well. So, yes. yeah, we're not always talking about selling. So. The other thing you mentioned, you mentioned about standards, but uh, I know also that the ed that Editors Canada has a certification program for editors. And um, like, can you tell me a little bit about how that works? Uh, yes, I can. So the uh, professional certification program at Editors Canada launched in 2006. And so it recognizes high levels of knowledge and skills. So basically editors who are at the top of their game. It's the gold standard of editing, and it's recommended that editors have at least five years of professional experience before pursuing their certification. It's based on the professional editorial standards that Editors Canada also develops. 
And there are five different certifications available, which is certified proofreader, certified copy editor, certified structural editor, certified stylistic editor. So those match up with what I talked about for uh, the previous question. And then for those editors who have successfully completed all four of those certifications, they then receive a designation of certified professional editor. Nice. So the exams are held once a year in November on a rotating basis. And so the exams that were just written this past November are now being marked, going through the marking process, and the results will be announced in the spring. Now in um, the spring of 2022, we did also launch um, the Editors Canada Editing Essentials exam. And this is an online test on the basics of editing that provides a qualification for entry-level editors. So it evaluates competency in structural, stylistic, and copy editing, as well as proofreading. And it's based on a selection of standards from professional editorial standards. It's offered online, so you can take it anywhere, anytime. Right. And, and that's not, the last one you mentioned is not something that leads to a certification, but it's an yeah. assessment for, for right. the person, as well as for Editors Canada. Yeah, whoever, whoever successfully completes editing essentials will receive uh, an, a certificate through email, but you're right. It's not one of the, uh, the certification exams that I mentioned first. And the other thing, just to clarify, is that uh, for, I think you mentioned at the top that there were maybe 1,200 members of Editors Canada. You do not have to be certified to be a member of Editors Canada, uh, and you you. I guess the other way around too, you, you can stay in Editors Canada without getting certified as well. But the certification is a, a marker for, uh, as you say, the sort of the, the top, the people who have been assessed basically. And it's a, it's a real certification, but there are lots of editors who are not certified, who certainly are members and benefit from the, from all the things that you already mentioned. So. Yeah, there are no there are no separate levels of membership in Editors Canada. So if you are a member, you have access to um, the benefits. And um, I should have mentioned we do have uh, student affiliate uh, members to get a reduced uh, membership rate, and they do still have access to the resources. I, the only difference there is that they um, they don't get to vote in at the AGM or. Um, things like that, but otherwise they have access to the same resources as uh, members do. Right, right. The other thing, and I, I, ju I just thought of this uh, this morning uh, from the 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 uh, the email that we all received is that there's uh, there's a conference that Editors Canada holds every year as well. And correct me if I'm wrong, but we haven't had it for in person for the last couple of years. But next year in June, it's going to be a, 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 an in, in-person conference in Toronto. Yes, so you are correct. Um, obviously in 2020, we ended up canceling the conference that we had planned for Montreal, which was actually going to be an international conference um, with a joint, it was a joint effort by um, international editing associations, but mm. because of the pandemic, we needed to cancel that. And then in 2021, and this past June in 2022, they were both online. But yes, in 2023, it will be in person in Toronto. And we're working on a virtual component for that. So whether that's streaming some sessions or offering recordings of sessions for purchase after the conference, we're not sure yet. But we are trying to make sure to accommodate uh, people who aren't comfortable um, meeting in person or who are unable to for various reasons. Yeah, you see that in a lot of organizations. And it's interesting you mentioned about comfort, but the other thing is expense as well. But the there are some people we've all now over the past, uh, I don't know, three, three or four years or whatever, I'm not sure gotten used to is the right term, but we've all experienced exactly what we're doing now, calling up Zoom and speaking that way and hearing presentations in that way. So it's 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 uh, it's good to hear that Editors Canada is working on uh, some sort of um, a venue, uh, electronic venue for uh, those who would prefer to do it that way as well. That's a, that's that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. um, 
one th the last thing I wanted to ask you about is that, and this is one of the topics that I've talked a fair bit about on the uh, on the through various episodes of the podcast, either through publishers or uh, editors or writers or whoever, and that's about uh, what what used to be called self-publishing, but what people are tending to call indie publishing now, that is basically not going through a literary agent or not going through traditional publishing, you know, submitting your manuscript in order to get something published, either, you know, DIYing it yourself through Amazon or going through, there are also now companies that you can pay to uh, pu publish your book for you. And they'll kind of, take care of anything from soup to nuts, right? From the editing right down to the getting it put on Amazon kind of thing for a fee, obviously. And I wanted to add, and, but they do use, I mean, they would use, it's not as if they have a special uh, coterie of editors in a room somewhere, they use freelance editors, uh, many of whom are probably members of Editors Canada to do the editing part of that work. And I wanted to know what your advice would be to a writer who chooses not to publish the traditional way, not to say, well, I finished my novel. I'm going to now try to find a literary agent, or I think I'll submit it directly to this publisher, but publishes it themselves. What are the essentials that they should do and what they should, what should they be aware of and be wary of a bit when they, they sort of uh, jump into the, the self-publishing uh, swimming pool? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so speaking as a representative of Editors Canada, I can't really provide advice to writers on how to get published, but definitely the number one thing I would recommend is uh, always work with a professional editor because working with a professional editor is sort of like having a supporting actor on your team and they can guide you through the process that we have many um, members who are very well versed in the publishing process and have guided many writers through the entire process. And um, they'll work with writers to bring out their very best and will um, be there at every step of the process. Yeah, no, that that's uh, that's true, and it actually uh, reminds me of what you were saying. What we sort of started off talking about about editing being, on one hand, a, like an invisible profession in a way, but also it's one maybe because it's a little invisible that people have kind of stereotypical ideas of. Uh, I, you know, people often think that basically it's something that an editor, is someone who checks the spelling and the punctuation, and calls it a day, and that is very very far from what the range of editors do i mean it's it's just not just not that at all and i know because uh, I've, I've had or i didn't ha end up having them on the show but there was one um one uh person i came across when i used to be on instagram and who was saying that uh what is it he called editors nitpickers and said that well you can skip that whole step by using grammarly and i thought I don't think so. <laughs> and uh, but this is the kind of this this guy was a was a charlatan, basically. But some of those uh, rationales come to people that, you know, maybe I just get a couple of friends to read it and I'm good. I'm good to go. So and, and that's uh, demonstrably not the case, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely not. You know, of course, editors have incredible eye for detail, but um, we definitely do much more than correcting spelling and, um, you know, using uh, built in spell checkers for, you know, of any sort could possibly lead writers astray in various ways. <laughs> definitely. It would show it would show up in the end. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Heather, thanks a lot for giving. That's a very good overview of, of, of a of a medium-sized organization that does a lot for 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 the for editors in Canada and indirectly for writers in Canada as well. Uh, thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll talk again. Yes, thanks very much, Wayne, for inviting me on, and it was a pleasure to speak with you today.